Hello and welcome to the channel. Either you are a subscriber or just a visitor, I am so so happy you reached us. My name is Roland Costilla, I am the Chief Security Officer or CISO at SAP and I am teaching you data privacy, cybersecurity and career development on this channel. So if you like privacy and cybersecurity, just please 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 hit the subscribe button like this video and do not hesitate to send us comments and feedbacks about what you would want to hear further. So just come for privacy and stay for cyber. If you are interested in a complete transformation path that will teach you not only data privacy, but also how to make privacy operational in a corporate organization, how to run a privacy program with tools and templates, everything that you need for that, how to achieve a higher role in your organization way faster and definitely how to pass EIPP certifications. Please take a look at my academy at www.defradar.com. The link is also in the description of this video below. If you want to have my overall executive resume templates that will teach you how to actually get more interviews faster or any other templates and spreadsheets that we create, just please check also our Etsy store called DevRadar. Uh, all the links are in the description below. That being said, let's jump to today's topic. Hi guys, in this lesson we'll discuss about international transfers and we'll take this with examples step by step. I have received a lot of questions regarding how personal data flows between different countries and I have decided to take an entire section and explain that. Till the end we will also understand what GDPR allows us in terms of safeguards or other separate procedures uh, in order for our company or for our data to flow um, in, a, in a manner that is considered compliant. So let's start with a glance the GDPR primarily applies to controllers and processors located in the European Economic Area and we will call that EEA from now on. And there, this is with some exceptions, for sure. Individuals risk losing the protection of the GDPR if their personal data is transferred outside of the EEA. On that basis, the GDPR restricts transfers of personal data outside EEA or the protection of the GDPR unless the rights of the individuals in respect of their personal data is protected in another way or on of a limited number of exceptions. A transfer of personal data outside the protection of GDPR, which we refer to as a restricted transfer, most often involves a transfer from inside the European Union to a country outside the European Union. If you wish to do so, you should answer the following questions until you reach a provision which permits your restricted transfer. Are we planning to make a restricted transfer of personal data outside the European Union? Do we need to make a restricted transfer of personal data in order to meet our purposes? Has the European Union made an equity decision? in relation to the country or territory where the receiver is located or a sector which covers the receiver. And we will um, understand during this uh, course what adequacy decision is and we will take this um, in, in a separate lessons. Have we put in place one of the appropriate safeguards referred to in the GDPR? And we'll have a separate lesson for safeguards and the safeguards are the most encountered measures um, involved in, um, in, in these restricted transfers. Does an exception provided for in the GDPR apply? If yes, you can make the transfer. If not, you cannot make the transfer in accordance with the GDPR. If you reach the end without finding a provision which permits the restricted transfer, you will be unable to make that restricted transfer in accordance with the GDPR. As I said before, 
The safeguards will be the most important part that you will focus on because these are the measures that you need to take into consideration and these are th facts that I've seen mostly happening for either small and medium enterprises or for even big corporations. In brief, what are the restrictions on international transfers? The GDPR restricts the transfer of personal data to countries outside the European area or international organizations. These restrictions apply to all transfers, no matter the size of transfer or how often you carry them out. So, are we making a restricted transfer? You are making a restricted transfer if the GDPR applies to your processing of personal data you are transferring. The scope of GDPR is set out in Article 2, what is processing of personal data, and also Article 3, where the GDPR applies. Please see the section of the guide, what is personal data. In general, the GDPR applies if you are processing personal data in the European Union and may apply in specific circumstances if you are outside the European Union and processing personal data about individuals in the European Union. Second, you are sending personal data or making it accessible to a receiver to which the GDPR does not apply, usually because they are located in a country outside the European Union. And third, the receiver is a separate organization or individual. The receiver cannot be employed by you or by your company. It can be a company in the same group. So let's take some examples. Example 1. A UK company uses a centralized human resources service in the United States provided by its parent company. The UK company passes information about its employees to its parent company in connection with the HR service. This is a restricted transfer. Example number 2. A UK company sells holidays in Australia. It sends the personal data of customers who have bought the holidays to the hotels they have chosen in Australia in order to secure their bookings. This is again a restricted transfer. Transfer does not mean the same as transit. If personal data is just electronically routed through a non-European Union country, but the transfer is actually from one European Union country to another European Union country, then it is not a restricted transfer. Let's take an example. Personal data is transferred from a controller in France to a controller in Ireland, both countries in the European Union, via a server in Australia. There is no intention that the personal data will be accessed or manipulated while it is in Australia. Therefore, the transfer is only to Ireland. You are making a restricted transfer if you collect information about individuals on paper which is not ordered or structured in any way and you send this to a service company located outside of the European Union to put it into digital form or add to a highly structured manual filling system relating to individuals. Let's take also an example for this case. A UK insurance broker sends a set of notes about individual customers to a company in a non-European Union country. These notes are handwritten and are not stored on computer or in any particular order. The non-European Union country adds the notes to a computer customer management system. This is a restricted transfer. Also, putting personal data onto a website will often result in a restricted transfer. The restricted transfer takes place when someone outside the European Union accesses that personal data via the website. If you load personal data into a new case server, which is then available through a website, and you plan or anticipate that the website may be accessed from outside the European Union, you should treat this as a restricted transfer. The second question to ask is, is it to a country outside of European Union? The Economic European Union countries consist of the European Union member states and the EFTA states. The European Union member states are listed in the first part of the slides 
and the EEA states are Iceland, Norway and Liechtenstein. The EEA Joint Committee has made a decision that the GDPR applies to those countries and transfers to those countries are not restricted. Do we need to make a restricted transfer of personal data outside these countries? So before making a restricted transfer, you should consider whether you can achieve your aims without actually sending personal data. If you make the data anonymous so that it is never possible to identify individuals even when combined with other information which is available to receiver, it is not personal data. This means that the restrictions do not apply and you are free to transfer the anonymized data outside the European Union. <laughs>